at this moment in hockey history. The Nashville Predators currently find themselves in 7th place in the Central Division after 12 games skated on the season. They have a record of 5-7 and seven and they have 10 points. Those 10 points have them 6 points behind the first place Colorado Avalanche and they are 4 points behind their next opponent which is in the Central Division, the Winnipeg Jets. Haven't had a chance to talk about the Central Division a whole lot so far this season. The Nashville Predators have mostly played Eastern Conference opponents and Pacific Division opponents but that is all about to change dramatically and quickly. So let's start at the top of the Central Division, make our way through the updated standings and then we'll start talking all things Nashville Predators and Winnipeg Jets. The Avalanche, as I mentioned, are currently in first place with 16 points. They have an overall record of 8-3. and three. The Dallas Stars have fallen to second place, 7-3 and 1 on the season, 15 points, 1 point behind first place, 1 point ahead of third place. Winnipeg, who has a record of 6-4-2 and two. and then we'll find the Arizona Coyotes at 13 points, the Minnesota Wild at 12 points, the St. Louis Blues at 11 points. The Nashville Predators have 10 sitting in 7th and the Chicago Blackhawks in the basement of the Central and 8th place have 8 points, but that is only 2 points behind the Nashville Predators. So first to last in the Central is separated by a total of 8 points. Now, for the Nashville Predators, once they wrap up this game against the Winnipeg Jets in Winnipeg, it will be the end of the CMA road trip. Two long weeks out there on the road for the Preds, and then they will be heading on home for a nice long homestand. They will be facing off a Saturday against the Arizona Coyotes, Tuesday against the Anaheim Ducks, and then a break all the way to Saturday when they'll take on the Chicago Blackhawks. And then on the 20th of November, the Colorado Avalanche come to Bridgestone Arena. And the 22nd of November is when the Calgary Flames will be in Nashville for a rematch of last night's game, the game that we are about to recap. Now, it's the first of four season meetings between the National Predators and the Winnipeg Jets. The next one will take place on the 26th of November. It's when the Winnipeg Jets come to Nashville for the first time to play at Bridgestone Arena. The two teams will not meet again until March the 13th when Nashville will make its second and final trip of the regular season into Winnipeg. And then on April the 9th, Winnipeg will come to Nashville for the second time on the season. That'll wrap up the four-game season series between these two Central Division rivals. Now let's get you set up with what's going on with the Winnipeg Jets. The Jets, like the Preds, have skated in 12 games this season, but the Jets find themselves in third place in the Central Division. They have an overall record of 6 4 and to 14 points as four points ahead of the Nashville Predators on home ice which is where the Winnipeg Jets will be facing off against the Nashville Predators they are 2-2 two, two, and 1 the Preds on the road are 2-5 and 0 oh. in the goals for category Winnipeg has 41 on the season the Nashville Predators have 34 in the goals against category Winnipeg also has 41 and the Nashville Predators have 36 a lot of symmetry coming up in these numbers and in these rankings I had to double check several of them because frankly I some of it was so much the same uh, that I started to double check my work and started to overthink it just a little bit. So let's get into the matchup for the Winnipeg Jets. Their most previous five games. Let's take a look at the most recent sample size. Go back to October the 28th with a 4-3 shootout loss in Montreal against the Canadians on the 20th or the 30th of October. A 3-2 overtime loss versus the New York Rangers at home. Then on the 2nd of November a 5-2 loss in Vegas but everybody except Anaheim has lost to Vegas. On the 4th of November a 5 to three win at Arizona and most recently on the 7th of November a 5 to 2 win in St. Louis against the Blues it was Hellebuck getting the victory in that game 20 out of 22 overall a very light night of workload when it comes to Connor Hellebuck for the National Predators a couple of injuries are still affecting day-to-day -day play for this team Shen has not been seen since game one of the season still on injured reserve Glass hasn't been around since almost that time still on injured reserve as well Ryan McDonough still listed as day-to-day -day, but word from the broadcast last night was that he is getting close to returning and they just want to keep him out of the lineup to get a little bit healthier. Now, that gets you set as far as where we are in the standings. Let's talk about the rankings and the matchups and the numbers between these two central division rivals. In the goals for category, Winnipeg far ahead. 3.42 per game is a very good number. 10th overall in the NHL. 41 goals for is the total. Uh, the Preds only 2.83 per game are 21st overall in the NHL. The Preds seven goals behind the same number of games played at 34. In the goals against category, though Winnipeg is giving up more than Nashville, the Preds sit at three goals against per game. That's 15th in the league, right in the middle of the pack. 3.33 goals against per game is the number for the Winnipeg Jets. That puts them at 20th in the league. When it comes to the shots on goal category, the Nashville Predators dipping back in this category over the course of this road trip, now down to 30.3 per game. That is 20th in the 
NHL. In the shots for category shots on net for the Winnipeg Jets, 32.8 per game is 10th best in the league at this moment in time. In the shots against category, Winnipeg doing a great job of limiting shots against only 27.9. I just mentioned Hellebuck only faced 22 shots in their most recent game at St. Louis, and they're only giving up 27.9 against per game. That's sixth best overall in the entirety of the NHL. The National Pros are giving up 30.3 per game, and they are giving up exactly the same amount as they are getting on goal. It's 30.3, but this ranking is 13th in the NHL. When it comes to special teams, the Preds do have the advantage on the power play. 12th best, 22.5% conversion rate, 11 out of 49 opportunities. When it comes to the Winnipeg Jets power play, they are rated 20th in the NHL, 17.8%. 8 out of 45 is the raw data on that power play. When it comes to the penalty kill unit, the national person, the Winnipeg Jets, neither one of these teams are very happy or proud or excited about where they find themselves in the league rankings at this time. Uh, the Winnipeg Jets are better by one spot than the national person. A 70% kill rate is 29th in the NHL, and the Jets have given up 12 power play goals against. Now, the Nashville Predators, 69.2% kill right is 30th in the NHL 17 or 12 power play goals against as well for the Nashville Purse. It was a tough start to the season but still sitting at 30th it improved for a couple of games but they are dipping back down. That's why we go through this each and every game so you can follow along with how the team is trending in each and every one of these particular categories. Every team in the NHL has high powered individual and super incredibly skilled players and these two teams have uh, absolutely no doubt about that. Let's start with the top five in the statistics on the offensive side of things for the Winnipeg Jets and the names on this list are players that have had incredibly good success against this Nashville Predators team that's why sometimes this matchup doesn't work out very well uh, for the Nashville Predators Connor eight goals leads the Winnipeg Jets at this point in time four assists added that is 12 points uh, Connor a player that usually has good success against the Nashville Predators Shifley five goals and seven assists for 12 points high for the team lead in points and then you see I follow at four and six for 10. Morrissey, one and nine for 10. Nino Niederreiter, former Nashville per five goals, four assists on the season for nine points. And again, each and every one of these players, regardless of where they've played, uh, they seem to have good success against the National Predators. So this top grouping for the Winnipeg Jets in statistics, I think, is going to have a good home game against this Predators team. Flipping over to the Predators side of thing when it comes to the statistics, Philip Forsberg leads the team in scoring with 12 overall points. His breakdown is two goals and a team leading 10 assists. Ryan O'Reilly has seven goals on the season. That leads the team. You add four assists to that. That's 11 points. So Philip Forsberg now still at a point per game on the season. O'Reilly dips just below that. Tommy Novak, six goals and four assists for 10 points. The captain, Roman Yossi, is at two and six for eight. And Luke Evangelista, one and seven for eight points. And Luke Evangelista doing a very good job. He's right there in the thick of it for the rookie scoring race, something we may start talking about once we get past at least the quarter pole of the season. But Luke Evangelista right now should be in the early season conversation for Calder Trophy. He's doing quite good, and consistency was the key to him coming in here and doing well and he's doing much better than several other players young players veteran players it doesn't make a difference but he is performing at a very high level Luke Evangelista is off to a very very good start the goaltending matchup expected for this one Connor Hellebuck 6-3 and 1-8-9-2 save percentage 2.98 goals against average and I feel like I've said the name Connor Hellebuck as many times as any other name across the entire landscape of the NHL over the last decade of coverage here on the show so Connor Hellebuck for the Winnipeg Peg Jets, as always. Uh, UC Saros, 4 and 6 for the National Person, 9 11 save percentage, 2.73 goals against average. And we'll talk about it as we get into the recap and as we get into the analysis, but a little bit leaky as of late, and it's not much of a surprise. He customarily has a slow start to the season before really, really picking things up, ramping things up, and usually finding himself in the Vezina conversation towards the end of the season, at least uh, for a Vezina finalist position. So you see Soros right now not putting up the numbers everyone is necessarily expecting, but the Nashville Predators 12 games into the experiment of having the brand-new coach, bringing in a brand-new roster, 5-7 and seven is not overall a bad record, being only six points out of first place, and most importantly, being only four points out of what would be an automatic qualifying spot for a playoff team. Yes, I made it 12 games into the season before I brought up the NHL playoffs that are upcoming in like six months. So we, 
<laughs> Slow down just a little bit on that one. So the Nashville Predators right now, that's got you all set up for their next game, the final game of the CMA road trip, the longest road trip of the year. They have one other long West Coast road trip uh, coming up a little bit later in the season, but they're coming back home, and they will have a long homestand, and we'll see a lot of Central Division hockey coming up over the next couple of games. That's got you set for that game. we got to go back and talk about what happened in Calgary and uh, I just go ahead and warn you right now, you're not going to be real happy with the way this one turns out. And I've got a lot of things to say about the Calgary Flames game for the Nashville Predators. So let's get to the game recap. Let's get you through what happened in the game. And then let's start breaking it down, talking about statistics analysis, who performed well and who did not perform well. You'll find out coming up next on the Rebirth Sports full game recap right here on the Renegades of Puck Podcast. <laughs> 